My name is Laura Mira, and I'm with the Jesuit School of Theology and Homeboy Industries. The topic of my paper is cultural humility at the margins, walking with Homeboy Industries. To be humble while serving those at the margins is synonymous with demonstrating humility. What then would it mean to practice cultural humility? The National Institutes of Health define cultural humility as a lifelong process of self-reflection and self-critique, whereby the individual not only learns about another's culture, but starts with an examination of his or her own beliefs and cultural identities. The term is coined in 1998 by Melanie Turvalon and Jan Murray Garcia, who developed cultural humility as a tool to educate medical professionals, working with cultural, ethnic, and racial diversity in the United States. They see its purpose as learning to understand oneself and then others in order to build honest and trustworthy relationships. Since then, other fields have found their approach useful to apply to any social advocate, working with someone different from themselves in any cultural context and in any part of the world. Cultural humility differentiates itself from cultural competency, an older notion defined by mastery and expertise, where cultural competency responds with, I can teach you, how to dot dot dot. Cultural humility asks, can you help me understand your culture? How can you teach me? Well, this approach made a lot of sense to me when a colleague introduced the concept at a Jesuit university. It made sense to me as one who walks alongside others marginalized, both in my family and in my work at Homeboy Industries in Los Angeles. It surprised me that little has been written by Catholics or faith ministries in general on this topic. There is a growing body of published work on cultural humility in other areas. There, its application of the core tenets have been put into practice, namely, the redressing of power imbalances through mutually beneficial questioning and listening. My hope is to align my faith ministry alongside these tenets, as well as its other principle, a commitment to lifelong self-reflection on questions of cultural identity, civic engagement, and compassion. So in this spirit of cultural humility, I won't assume it is a solution others need. Instead, I ask, would listening to Catholics who have worked to unite cultures be helpful to you? Well, if so, then I offer this paper and its consideration of how the work of two priests in Jesuit communities on the margins exemplifies the approach and purpose of cultural humility. Father Brian Massingale's book, Racial Justice for the Catholic Church, and its outline of church resources needed for anti-racist unity, is discussed in relationship to how those resources illustrate Father Greg Boyle's work with Homeboy Industries. I then look at how their combined work resonates with the core tenets of cultural humility and its intention to build trustworthy relationships across differences and divisions. Well, Massengale describes Catholic Church beliefs and practices that he believes can ground a new counter-narrative when necessary to commit to being an essential, an essential agent of change in America for racial reconciliation. Well, Homeboy has embraced this notion with its vision of relational kinship among those of various races, cultures, and gangs, creating the kind of alternative community that Massengale calls for. Boyle, in 2021, describes the work of Homeboy Industries as 
Therapeutic Mysticism of Wholeness. Kinship is a word Boyle, the founder of Homeboy Industries, uses when speaking of unity, while Massengale, a Catholic ethics professor at Fordham University, views unity as racial reconciliation. In 2020, during the peak of American racial unrest, Massengale offered a social justice series at New York City's St. Francis Xavier Church, the parish that introduced me to the Jesuits before joining Homeboy. Massengale and Boyle's common vision aims to have us belong to each other and to each other's stories. Their approach shines a light on asking the oppressed and those at the margins to be the teacher. This non-hierarchical stance is at the core of cultural humility. These two Catholics guide us into a more profound sense of how to receive others by offering stories that highlight the setting aside of assumptions and developing compassionate respect for another's wisdom with an egoless withholding of fix-it solutions. When Boyle writes, go to the margins, not to make a change, but to allow others to change you, we get a glimpse of reflective listening that is valued in cultural humility. When Massengel writes, racism engages us at a visceral level, we understand this as an example of personal engagement necessary for cultural humility learning experiences. At Homeboy, writes Boyle, the tenderness of the place is felt on a visceral level. It's palpable. Visceral personal engagement while dialoguing with others from another culture requires this kind of unguarded openness and a willingness to examine one's feelings. While the purpose of this paper is not to detail the Jesuit spiritual exercises, it seems relevant to note that Ignatian contemplation develops a similar commitment to reflective listening and the cherishing of stories that resonate closely with cultural humility. Boyle's life as a Jesuit and Massengale's work at Jesuit institutions indicated taking seriously the reflection and self-awareness called for in the exercise developed by St. Ignatius of Loyola. Massengale's self-reflective suggestions are explicit in his book, and Boyle's are baked into his stories of gang members making or baking bread together. Massengale highlights how Catholic church beliefs can be a primary healing element for racial reconciliation, such as faith in the common dignity and origin of the human family. The Homeboy Industries motto and philosophy know us and them, echoes this witness of creation in the acceptance of everyone being welcomed, accepted, hired, and trained at the nonprofit social enterprises and in their community. Regardless of culture, faith, belief, or a violent criminal past. Other Catholic beliefs Massengale mentions, such as acts of risky solidarity, or diversity as a divine blessing, are illustrated by Homeboy Industries staff in their advocacy of inclusion. We are responsible for each other's welfare, is expressed as the belief that undergirds Homeboy Industries theology and methodology. This has built a foundation for open dialogue, respect, for the wisdom of each other's voices and lived experience at Homeboy Industries is modeled in a peer support system, one that elevates staff with lived experience to become navigators for new employees, building a non-hierarchical community. Massengale envisions not only church beliefs, but Catholic practices as support for racial reconciliation. One in particular is truth-telling. Cultural humility asks us to do so mainly with ourselves, to understand our cultural biases, to become more self-aware listeners of others' stories. 
Homeboy Industries has a ritual. It's called the Thought for the Day. This is carried on now through social media and Zoom. It was once alive in person, pre-pandemic. It encourages staff and trainees to reflect on their inner journey and express those insights in a public testimonial. Truth telling. Many of them are broadcast on our YouTube channel, but we also offer private insight oriented therapy, which addresses harms done and are reconciled during one's past in gang or during incarceration. This is required and actually free to all of Homeboy Industries trainees. Massingale writes, lament is a church response and a church resource to name the pain present. Therapy and other Homeboy industry support groups that utilize music, art, poetry, dance, offer a visceral naming process, as well as do other culturally sensitive, sensitive experiences, such as Dia de las Muertas altars, indigenous funeral rites, and sweat lodges. When others join the oppressed in honoring their sorrows, Massengel describes this as an act of confession and contrition. When everyone at Homeboy Industries join their Black co-workers in the Black Lives Matter movement during the George Floyd injustice marches, a unity that was tangible, graced all. Compassion is included in Massengale's church resource list. And this is an essence, an essence that is most associated with Homeboy Industries. Boyle likes to call this compassion a no matter whatness, and is seen at Homeboy Industries from small acts such as greeting all visitors at the door all who enter with respect, even if from a once rival gang, all the ways to the trauma-informed care of those who have been marginalized, demonized, and rejected. At Homeboy Industries, all the services are free and align with the Catholic option for the poor. Cultural humility understands this as creating a non-hierarchical and non-judgmental openness in the acceptance of the gifts, strengths, points of view, and voice one brings to the table of unity. Many who have suffered great poverty have become organizational leaders, teachers, and guides for our common journey towards wholeness and the kingdom of God at Homeboy. Boyle positions homeboy's spiritual mission closest to that church belief. It is heard in his description of homeboy industries as, quote, this kingdom of God is a community that really has no outcasts. Everyone is welcome to this table fellowship. It is about in the end, building the kingdom of God such that God might recognize it, end of quote. Well, lastly, the church sacrament of the Eucharist offered in table fellowship can, says Massengale, stretch our social imagination in achieving racial reconciliation and unity while creating a faith community of consciousness. While this is not a part of Homeboy Industry Services, those who do want to receive the Eucharist are welcomed by Boyle to join his masses at the nearby Jesuit Dolores Mission Church. Fathers Boyle and Massengale illustrate reflective dialogue and non-judgmental listening as a way to follow Jesus's ministry, know God's desire, and ultimately enter into God's divine promise of eternal love for all. Massagill writes that racial reconciliation is a divine gift and promise, 
Reconciliation is ultimately God's doing. So Fathers Boyle and Massengale, two priests connected to Jesuit communities at the margins, offer anyone committed to anti-racist work and unity a way to integrate cultural humility into their lives.